Next up, one of my favorite strategies that I use all the time, or more or less complements everything else that I do with market structure, um, is using Fibonacci retracements. So these tools actually really help you to identify uh, natural retracements in the price movement. And especially when they align with significant supports and resistances, there's a higher probability that the that you'll be able to make some kind of profitable trade off these levels. So if you don't know what a Fibonacci retracement is, it just simply measures the distance between two extremes of price, which I call a peak and a trough, or it could also be a high and a low. Um, and you'll hear me s uh, refer to a Fibonacci when I'm using it. Uh, I'll talk about measuring the most recent measured move, which is usually I draw them on the longer time frames like the 15 minute or hourly somewhere in there but typically i lately i've been using the 30 minute to the hourly and seem to work the best for the bigger levels but like i said many times before the market is fractal so you can use this on any time frame um and i like i also mentioned already when fibs coincide with other areas like trend lines pivot points exponential moving averages other solid support and resistance levels or zones um, that particular area is going to be more significant and have a higher probability of working and for your information these are my thinkorswim fibonacci settings that give the the actual measured move and then i'll plot the upper and lower extension so i have an idea of where if we clear the highs and the lows where the potential next targets will be and also could identify potential reversal areas. Bullish Fibonacci retracement rules. So I draw from the high to low. That's typically how I draw Fib, but it's simply up to you. But based on that, I have a table here based on the, the Fibonacci level. What are my specific rules for that level? So. Starting from the bottom, we have the low of the move, and then we have zero to 100% is the main move. So 100% is the high of the move, 0% is the low of the move. And then we have our retracements within that move. So one third back is 61.8, and that's usually the first support for trend continuation to the upside. And an even better entry could be the 50%, which is the halfway retracement. And then two thirds back is the 38.2%. Fib. And that you'll hear me say a lot of times it's the line in the sand, meaning like if the bulls don't hold this level, then the bears are just going to take over and the price is going to drop completely. Because a lot of times that two thirds retracement aligns with a serious level that needs to hold. And then above and below, we'll have a 123.6%. In this case, since we're talking about bullish trades. Bullish rules, 123.6% would be our first target. And then two thirds above the 161.8% is a good target to take off. We just mentioned that in the opening range trading strategy, it's good for taking profit and it's at least trim your position because a possible reversal could happen. And then a really extended extreme target would be adding 100% to that move, which is. Uh, if you're already two thirds higher from the measured move at the 161.8% FIB, adding another 100% on top of that, which we can have days like that. Um, more or less, it's like a two standard deviation move. So I've seen bigger days and more or less we're extent, overextended and it's possible that we might have a, a strong reversal in the other direction. So definitely take your profit. Um, let's take a look at an example. So this is a bullish Fibonacci retracement example. And this is on the ES, S&P 500 futures are on the 30 minute chart here. I drew the Fib here, looking at the most recent measured move from the Globex action from Thursday's, Thursday night's new open into Friday, like all that Globex overnight action. I drew the, drew, uh, excuse me, drew the Fib from the high to the low. And that gave me my Fibonacci retracements. So we have potential long opportunities just from drawing this Fib. 
We have long opportunities at one third back at 2790. We have the halfway back, which is 50% fib at 2783 half. And then two thirds back, a line in the sand, which is 2776.75. And notice, if you just look over here, you draw a line here, look where this, these fibs are aligning with pretty strong areas of previous support. And then look where this two-thirds line is intersecting with, the breakout of the overnight of that push. It's the tops of those candles. So it's clear if we don't hold that area, I mean, we broke out and pushed higher, we should continue to make higher lows like we did there, then more or less you'd be looking to short. So um, if, if the bulls don't show up to defend the last level before price goes lower. So where are we going to enter this trade? We have our fibs here. We don't want to place a blind limit just in case price slices through there. Um, we have a big red candle that comes in here on strong volume. This is the US market open. Okay, it sliced through our two thirds back, so that's not a good level to enter on. So let's look at the 50% level first, uh, uh, or at least next. We see this candle come in here with a nice lower wick on decent volume, and there's a good probability that that trade could hold to continue back up to the upside at least test this area up here and potentially the opening range high so let's see where i would have actually taken that trade i would have put an entry at the the lows the lows of these candles that sell-off candle at the open and this next bullish candle and put a stop below that wick once the candle closes so we have a clear area where to put our stuff if we're wrong. And then the first target would be back up to test the old support and new resistance, which is just the lows of these candles. And then the second target would be back to the opening range high. And then if you're still holding this trade, which is pretty much all day you're in the trade, if you have that much patience, you are, uh, you're God, really amazing. <laughs> Um, but it can be done. I've seen people do it, but there's a lot of opportunity just even taking this first target or even the second target. So above the opening range high, we'd have another place to take profit once we see that doji candle come in. And also that's just above the 123.6% Fibonacci extension. All right, now let's take a look at a bearish Fibonacci retracement. Let's look at the rules and then an example. So again, uh, bearish rules for Fibonacci are gonna be the exact opposite of the bullish ones, but just to quickly go through them, zero to 100% is the measured move. And then in between there, we have one third back, we have halfway back and we have two thirds back. So two thirds back would be the line in the sand or the bears have to defend or the bulls are more than likely going to take over. 50% is a really good entry to continue the downtrend. It's a solid retracement to get another push lower. And the same with the 38.2% fib, it's one third back. If the trend is really strong to the downside, typically you'll, you won't get much further than a one third back pullback. And then extensions lower. I actually should have put the top three below the 0% because they're actually plotted lower than the low of the move. So the first target is actually the negative 23.6% and then two thirds lower is negative 61.8. It's a possible reversal where I would look to trim position or take profit. And on bigger momentum days, you can have uh, a move down for another 100% lower at the negative 161.8% the where there's a very strong possibility of reversal, or at least you should take profit there. So here is the ES S&P 500 futures on the 30 minute. So again, drawing the measured move from the overnight high and low. It is the opening range low, I believe. Opening range in general from, let's see here. We got, this is just before the cash market opened. And then this is a push up uh, around lunchtime. So it's a good fib to draw there. It kind of defines the price action. I didn't draw this fib until I saw us reject here. 
and create a red candle and start selling off lower. So typically I would have looked for um, maybe some long trades, see if we would bounce on these fibs lower. But if you look at the overall market structure, it's in a downtrend, right? So we should be looking for uh, bearish trades at the moment here because the longer market structure is actually pointing to the downside. So possible short opportunities once price breaks, um, comes back and retests, test these lows here. You want to look for a retracement up to the one third or a retracement up to the halfway back to enter a short here or here. So you want to look, the, actually the first one would have worked perfectly at the one third back. And then the second one was a nice, uh, you can see there's like two waves here. We had one push up failed, tried to make a higher low and we did. And then we pushed up to just under the 50% fib. Uh, for the strong move lower, which is where I would have loved to enter that short there halfway back. Um, so the possible short opportunities I would have looked for at uh, 28.40 half, which is two thirds back. That's the line in the sand. A really solid entry would have been around 28.34 quarter. And then the first potential entry one third back would have been 28.28. Um, and I would have identified uh, the entries on the five minute and what's importantly the tick chart because this is a 30 minute chart and I don't trade, uh, I don't trade my entries based on this. I just use the 30 minute chart and longer time frames to get the bigger overall levels and then zone in on the shorter time frames uh, to find the good entry points. So after seeing that red push up candle uh, or rather the green one, it's on light volume. This is the Globex action. Uh, meaning it's overnight. You'd want to look to enter somewhere between the one third back to the 50% back fib. So look for reversal signs there. Set up your trade, identify your clear stop loss after this candle on the 30 minute. Had stronger volume with a, a decent size upper wick. So we'd look to enter, look to enter on that trade, uh, excuse me, that candle once it closes with a stop above there. Now you could find a better entry, a better stop loss setup if you zone in again on the five minute of the tick chart. And where's our first target? It's going to be the one, the negative 23.6% fib lower first, right? Uh, some people might take profit at the 2808 because that's the low of the overnight, somewhere around there. Um, but since we're making lower lows and lower highs, and you can see there's a flag here, the bear flag that broke down. Uh, there's quite some momentum behind this, so you could pay yourself first, um, but definitely have there's more more profit to be had in this particular trade, considering the momentum of that break. And second target would have been two thirds lower. See, and you can see where this reversal candle came in. Uh, you definitely don't want to keep sitting in a trade hoping for it to continue lower when something like that could happen. Another bear flag was formed and we continued lower, but you could have significantly lost half your profit um, if you didn't take your, if you didn't get paid down here. And then if you have amazing patience and you're still holding this trade all the way through the next day to Tuesday, that negative 161.8% fib. So the ultimate target, the second target was two thirds lower from the opening range. So add another 100% to that move lower is where we finally rebounded and started making higher lows. We've had a double bottom and started building a base before the bull showed up and we uh, started to move up. And notice here how this first, this second target right here acted as resistance over here. So um plenty of trading opportunities and once this broke here right here you could have shorted that and you could have shorted that there's just a lot of once you recognize the market structures a lot of opportunities you can find that are worth very high reward low risk setups